Good morning and welcome back to another episode of the Ghost of Fishing. So I got the boys, all of them today. It is a Friday. Um, one thing I'd like to say it brought to my attention from my last video was yes, I am extremely blessed to be where I live and where my parents chose to buy a house and grow up and raise my family and oh sorry raise me and my siblings as kids so i definitely want to say that yeah that is a big part of my privilege um also my kids homeschool so um like the great dmx who passed away last year i'm right into hip-hop culture myself Hi, i'm a 90s kid Hi, um he said one of his famous lines that I remember um, hearing the other day was just because they say it is doesn't mean that it has to be the way it is so yeah in saying that was basically saying like don't be afraid to challenge the system um, don't be afraid to do stuff that you want to do uh, also and, and not following the same systems that have been going for on for years and years and years. I'm also reading a book called 33 Strategies of War and they basically say that massive change doesn't go, come from following a system over and over again. It's the ones that break free from the system and try something new that change the world all the time. But yeah, so always remember, don't be afraid also to put your middle fingers up and be yourself 100%. Um, no hiding, just be yourself. It always leads to more happiness, that's for sure. And also if you have any mental issues or any, um, you know, challenges in life, don't be afraid to message me. I'm always here to talk to anybody. I've already been talking to a few people and I hope it's helping them as well. Um, yeah, definitely. Or call a friend, Lifeline. Definitely another good thing. So our challenge today, we are catching beach worms because my son's going fishing. I have to work tomorrow as I promised to do a plastering job for a, a friend. Um, we've come down here to catch some free bait. Something you can do with the kids, hang out on the beach if you've got one to drive on to if not you can park in a car park worms are found pretty much on all beaches of australia so we're going to catch some worms and he's going fishing with his friend and his friend's dad tomorrow while i'm at work and his dad asked me if i could get some fresh worms so this is a free live bait episode so let's get into them and i'll show you how i catch them and the Grommy's gonna throw some plastics in this nice looking gutter and maybe pull us up a flathead or something. All right, let's go, catch some worms. Yo. Yeah, so it's a really good thing you can do with the kids. Um, it's really fun, it's hard, obviously, but you do get them if you practice and um, you get a lot of bait that works well in beaches and rivers anywhere, really. Um, it's a really good bait for all kinds of spread and butter species. Um, and you know it's, it's cheap it doesn't cost much all you need is a keeper net and a little side bucket and some fish frames um you can get your fish frames from boat ramps people will happily give them to you um or like me because i'm a fisherman and I, I freeze all my frames and save them for the days i get to go worming uh, in here i've got a tailor and some old flathead frames and whiting frames and the next thing that you do need is a pippy and we'll go find a pippy then i'll show you the process on how we go about catching worms see you in a sec mr wilson oh you're a bit heavier the first thing we do is we put all our bait into this bag All our bait goes into this bag. I've just got some lighting to put in there. I've got my sun up here, so bear with me in this one. Um, it may get a bit complicated. So 
as you can see in there. We got all our bait from Taylor, wide end frames and flat end frames. And this is just trap shell. So for Pippi, um, you usually find your Pippis down in the sand near the shoreline, near the water's edges, just digging in the sand, but we already have one so it made life easier. Sometimes they can be hard to find. So just gonna smash my Pippi open. Get that pippy out. Birds will eat the rest. Now that tongue there is what I call the best part for the worms. They can't pull it off and it's nice and small for them to hold on to. A bit windy but the only other thing we need is our little side. We tie this on our side. Um, that's what we put our worms in when we get them. So I'll tie that on now and we'll go start worming. But it is going to get a bit windy today, so we'll try our best. The worms can get a bit shy on the wind. Um, their feelers just seem to feel the wind as they come up and they're a bit more shy. Um, but what we're looking for is a big flat bank, like that one up there in the sand. The last two hours of the run out and a flat bank that's nice flat sand with no ripple is the best chance of finding some worms so we're going to head up to this bank and we'll start our worm and let's go so we're just on the edge of the sand here and we're basically just um, as you can see we're just running the bag through the water not far out we want plenty of draw out to get those worms up Ezra can you please move mate because that's where the worms are going to come up and then we're looking for um, a pea or a little moving part out in front of it that'll pop up in the sand. This little head pops up or it looks like a bee. And then we find our worm. Just found a worm down here. There he is. Yeah, can tell me. Alright, and just grab the hole. And uh, wait for the wave to move. Still gonna hang. It's nice and slow with the Okay. Got him! Yeah. <laughs> There's worm number one. Alright, that's our worm. Our first worm. Now we're trying to get some more. It goes straight into this little bucket. You're allowed 20 per person in New South Wales, so try and get our quota and then we'll keep going. Let's get another one. If it's a little one, can you film me? Yeah, close with the bag. Try and get creative with it. This can be your home school lesson. Learning how to film. Come and get some close-up shots. There's a pippy. No, close-up of the bag. Hold it down close. Oh, 
this one go, yeah, pull faster, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yes! Look at that! Is that a whole one? Yeah, you got him. <laughs> Done your little like fella. You did it. You did catch that. You did it. That's going to have to be your bait for whiting tomorrow. Make sure you put him in. Yeah. Alright, we're back in action. Um, I didn't want to run this through a thousand times and catch them. I kind of showed you that the way that you do it with the first worm and the second worm and my son's one. So. Yeah, so this is our kit that we got. You just follow that pattern. Follow that pattern and be extremely patient. You get your 20 worms and you're off to go fishing or you can freeze them up. It's another thing that I'll show you this afternoon. But to take care of our worms, the first thing we got to do is get some dry sand. Now we'll pour our worms into the dry sand because we want to take all of the, um, the slime off them. So just get them in some dry sand like that. The slime seems to kill them a bit, they're a little bit, and they get tangled up. So we'll just dry sand them out. Now, once you get your dry sand on them, just pinch softly and pull all that dry sand off. It takes the slime off them. That's one. Same again, just pulling him along, taking all that slime off him. Chuck him there. Now, and again, as you can see, you do that process with all your worms. So we'll just run through that. Oh, try not to break them like I just did. There's a head. That'll still be used. The idea is to keep them nice and long little worm for tomorrow. This might be the last one. That's a nice big one. Alright, so we got the sand off them. Make sure you got none, oh, just like that. Make sure you got no more left in that dry sand. They tend to hide. Okay. Now we get our bucket. It's our small bucket. And we dig down until we get to some moisturized sand. Now this sand's got moisture in it. That's the sand we want. Grab our worms, put them in the bucket. Sand will crawl. Dig down again and get some sand with moisture in it. Nice wet sand. Put that in. Fill her up. That's our worms done. All ready to go. Now they'll stay alive for a while, um, maybe overnight, but you gotta change the sand, make sure they got nice moisture in it again. If the sand dries out, they can die. But I'll also show you how to freeze them with metho and food dye. Um, hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm gonna go chuck some in the water now, go for a fish, see how it can work with this sort of wind, but there's some really good gutters. Quick fish with the kids, we go home for lunch. Um, if I ha hook anything, I will film it. It's hopefully something big, but um, we'll go from there. And if I don't, I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks again for watching. Peace.